What's going on, everybody? Welcome into another game day update. I'm Kelsey. I'm joined by Pat Boylan once again. Thank you for coming back on. Let's talk about today's game. The game tips off at 6 p.m. Central in Indiana. And I think the big news, at least from the Grizzlies fan side, is that John Morant is doubtful. So my question to you, coming into this game, obviously the Pacers, however long, for a couple of days, couple of weeks, are prepping for this game, thinking, how do we slow down jaw? How do we clog the paint? Now it looks like you may not have to worry about that. So how does the approach to the game change? Yeah, I think, you know, I think it changes dramatically. And it's good to be back on with you. I think it's been since the preseason uh, that the last time we've, uh, these two teams have matched up. We haven't seen you, yes. I know, here we are. Uh, I, I think the, the um, Grizzlies are the last team the Pacers haven't played this year. So it's oh. been uh, it's been a few months and we'll match up, I think, a couple of times here down the stretch. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think it changes it dramatically, um, you know, from a Pacers perspective. They've been on what kind of feels like a tour of the top young point guards in the NBA here lately. They took on a week ago Darius Garland in Cleveland. Uh, they then went to San Antonio, and uh, DeJounte Murray didn't play in that game. He was out. Uh, then Sunday went to take on Atlanta. Trey Young played, had a big game, and, and tonight it looks like there's a chance at least um, that Morant will be out. So the Pacers are missing a couple of these young top point guards and it's a little different now than I maybe would have answered this question a few weeks ago uh, a month plus ago with uh, the Pacers having made significant moves around the trade deadline or evolved around that DeMontis Sabonis for Tyrese Halliburton trade so obviously the Pacers hope they've got one of these young talented point guards and, and are pretty confident they do uh, but obviously with Memphis um, you know he with a, a guy like Morant who's second in the league in points in the paint um, I think a lot changes from a Pacers defensive perspective without him just because he is so dominant. I don't need to explain that to you. Um, but at the same point, as you very well know, the Grizzlies have been great this year when he hasn't played. So I think that's a good reminder that even though uh, from a Pacers perspective that Memphis comes in potentially without their best player and an MVP candidate, uh, the Grizzlies have more than gotten it done without him this year. And I, I would expect that's that 12 and two stat without him is something that Rick Carlisle mentions in pregame. Yeah, I would, I would agree. Um, and now, so these two teams, the Pacers have lost four of their last five. The Grizzlies won four of their last five. Uh, we talk about having John Morant out, but the Pacers have a lot of people out too right now. It, uh, they have a whole bunch of injuries or doubtful, questionable, all of that. There's a chance a lot of the guys don't play. Um, and so I look directly at those two new guys that you brought up, Tyrese Halbert and Buddy Heald. Uh, since that trade, uh, Heald is 25 and five is averaging. Tyrese even... 20 points a game, 9.5 assists per game, shooting 51% from the field. Uh, but I will say there's a big but with that. The Grizzlies just got one of their very best defenders back, one of the best defenders in the league, one-on-one, -on -one, especially against that wing. Uh, what matchup do you see Dylan Brooks having and what impact does he have kind of trying to slow down one of those guys? Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see, first of all, exactly how the Grizzlies match up if they don't have Morant, if it is yeah. perhaps... Uh, Brooks on Halliburton and, and Halliburton and, and uh, Buddy Heald have both been kind of intriguing guys to watch over the last month plus. Heald overall, you gave some of his numbers there, has been really good. In fact, the one area that you might say where he hasn't been quite as good as you would have expected is his three-point shooting, but his scoring is there. Uh, his assist numbers are off the charts, at least compared to his norms. Um, and his rebounding has been a lot better. So it's been interesting that he's been really successful here. But the one thing you think of with Buddy Heal, the three-point <laughs> shot, it's been fine, don't get me wrong, but he hasn't been uh, you know, a 45% three-point shooter. And I think we're all still learning – uh, Tyrese Halliburton and his fit here with the Pacers, but he's been tremendous so far. 20 points, 10 assists per game. You know, his assist numbers would put him third in the NBA if he did that over the course of a year and what he's done the last month plus in Indiana. And his shooting numbers are, are tremendous, over 50% from crazy. the field. Over 40% from the three-point line, right. So I would guess that's put your best defender probably on Halliburton. Um, and if that's Brooks, especially with Morant out, uh, wouldn't surprise me to see him get that assignment. Yeah, that would be a cool one. Uh, another just fun thing to mention is that he's had double doubles in three of the last four games as well, six since All-Star break. So he has just been on a tear. I think that is the matchup to watch. And I would say that even if Jaw did play, that I think Tyrese Halliburton versus Dylan Brooks could be just like the matchup that we're going to see this week. We'll see it next week when they're in Memphis. I think that's the cool one to watch. My last question for you, and this is more of an opinion-based question, is I just saw a stat that the Grizzlies have not won in Indiana since 2015. What on earth is with the arena there? 
<laughs> you know, that surprises me a little bit because you're going back then to the Gasol and Zach Randolph, uh, the end of that era, of course, which was so good. And the Grizzlies had a couple of down years, but the last couple of years have obviously uh, been better as well. You know, the Pacers had for so long, they went 30 years uh, with a winning record at home without having one season uh, with a losing record. So uh, the Fieldhouse, now Gainbridge Fieldhouse, previously Banker's Life, um, and before that, Conseco, has been such a home court advantage. It's a home court advantage for everybody to play at home, of course, but even from a Pacers perspective, that's been a really tough building for other teams to play in. The last couple of years, we haven't seen uh, quite that level of excellence in the building. That is that is an interesting stat. I hadn't seen that. Um, you know, the, the Pacers have changed so much here over the last month plus that it's tough to really know how much to weigh in to stats <laughs> like that. But I can tell you uh, this game tonight will be, if not a sellout, very, very close. Unfortunately, I think a lot of that was people wanting to see Morant for the first time in a while, and that may not happen. But um, from a home court perspective, we expect a really good crowd tonight. And, uh, you know, we'll see. I think the Pacers have, have had a lot of games where you look at their record and they're, um, they're, they're better than perhaps the record might suggest because they're really struggling in the final few minutes of games. They've, that's kind of been the storyline all year long before the trade, after the trade. The Pacers have been in more close games than anybody, and right now are 30th in that clutch rating in the league. So it wouldn't shock me if this is a close game, but if it gets there, uh, Indiana's going to have to probably find a different level of success down the stretch than they found oftentimes this year. Wow, that's actually really interesting as well because the Grizzlies have given up double-digit leads uh, I don't have the stat off the top of my head, but in a lot of their in a lot of their recent games. So, hey, cheers to a good game, Pat. Thank you so much for coming on again today. I really appreciate your time. Of course, appreciate you having me, and hopefully, we get a good one tonight. Yes, hopefully, uh, everyone at home. Once again, the game tips off at six p.m. Central, so it's a little bit earlier. Um, that's seven p.m. Eastern if you're watching from Indiana, and you can catch the game on Valley Sports Southeast.